just outside of Bear River Migratory Bird Refuge in northern Utah. And what we've got here is some very slow moving water, essentially a swamp. Just to the left of the culvert there is swamp milkweed. Just to the right of the culvert is showy milkweed. A lot of people get worked up when I say showy milkweed is a wetland species milkweed. Well, showy milkweed is one of the most adaptable milkweed plants in the West. It does very well in a wetland habitat like we have here. It also does very well in a dry habitat. It can develop a root rhizome thick enough to go three months without a single drop of rain. So the most adaptable milkweed, you could call that a wetland species if it's able to grow in a wetland. Along with the swamp milkweed, we've got hard stem bulrush. Hard stem bulrush is definitely a wetland plant, always associated to water. Whenever I see swamp milkweed in the West, whether it's in Idaho, Utah, it is always associated to hard stem bulrush. It grows uh, with the roots interlaced. Looking down this canal on the right hand side now is predominantly swamp milkweed. And on the left hand side is showy milkweed. The difference is the left hand side is about 12 inches higher in elevation. So that showy milkweed is growing with its roots in extremely close proximity to the water while maybe not being quite as wet. The difference could be only six inches in elevation from the water. So that's why I call it a wetland species. I first saw it as a wetland species when I was bidding on a project for uh, Utah. Utah government is, uh, they passed a pollinator partnership program and they were looking for growers to supply pollinator plants. And for Northern Utah under, they had two categories, upland plants and wetland plants. And showy milkweed was listed as a wetland plant. And that's where I was, that's where I got curious and started calling it a wetland plant when I would see it in wetland habitats. But keep in mind, it's just simply the most adaptable milkweed in the Great Basin and most of the West. So it grows in both wetland habitats, but not always. It'll also grow in very dry habitats. Uh, if you take a, a dry habitat milkweed, like an upland habitat milkweed, like uh, Asclepius fascicularis, and you put narrow milkweed, narrow leaf milkweed in a wetland habitat, those roots are gonna be too wet. It's gonna be too wet for the plant. It's not a wetland habitat species. So showy milkweeds adapted to both dry and wet habitats. Let's see if we can uh, give you a closer look at the swamp milkweed. All those pink flower heads. We got dragonflies, which are of course laying their eggs and feeding on the mosquitoes in this area. Um, water seeps through from that field. Uh, it comes down from the mountains goes into the Bear River and off to the west out there goes into the Bear River bird refuge and then onto the Great Salt Lake which is in the distance those mountains I'm not sure if those are Antelope Island I don't think I'm far enough south to see Antelope Island yet so those are possibly mountains on the uh, west shore of the Great Salt Lake so here we have swamp milkweed on one side of the ditch and on the other side of the ditch, showy milkweed plants, a wetland species, also capable of being an upland species, but survives very nicely in wetland habitats. Thanks for watching, Milkweed Nation. Have a great day.